Assalamu alaikum. I'm Ibrahim Khan from Islamic Finance Guru. Today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite subject, Forex. What is it? What does Islam have to say about this? And you know, you've got some Forex brokers who offer these Islamic accounts. What's that all about? Are they truly Islamic? And also, really importantly, is this actually a good investment? Even if it is Islamic, is it actually worth it? As someone in my past life, I used to work as a corporate lawyer and I actually acted for some Forex brokers and advised them on their structures and their regulations. And through that, I got a much better understanding of how this whole business works. And I wanted to share that insight with you on this video. So Forex is really easily accessible online and you'll see lots of adverts for brokers as well. In a nutshell, the idea is that you make money by buying and selling currency. So if some currency goes up, then you make a profit off that. Nothing problematic about that. So for example, if you buy £5,000 worth of dollar and the dollar goes up and you make £6,000 back, you've made £1,000 profit, no problems at all. However, there's a little bit more to it that meets the eye and Forex is not necessarily what we just outlined. For a start, the most crucial difference is that currencies only move a tiny fraction every single day. So in order for you to take advantage of that movement daily, you need to be investing huge amounts of money. So for example, let's say for every pound that you invest, a cent profit is what you achieve. So if you invest a thousand pounds, on that day you'll have made $10 profit. Not a lot of money. But if you invested £100,000, you make $1,000 profit. That is serious money. But how is it that you can get a lot of money uh, and invest that even if you have not very much money? This is where we go to leverage. So what these Forex companies do is they give you access to something called leverage or borrowing. And so what that means is for every one pound that you invest, you can take positions of 50 pounds, 100 pounds. And what that does is it massively magnifies your returns, both profitable and your losses. Now, strictly speaking, you know, borrowing from someone and using leverage is not haram in of itself. So if you go to someone and say you borrow 100 pounds and you use that 100 pounds to buy something and you want to leverage um, that transaction, because if you only have two pounds yourself, and you've borrowed that £100, suddenly you can do a lot more with it. And then you can make a lot more profit out of it as well. And then you make that profit and then you give that £100 back as an interest-free loan. That's perfectly fine. Leverage in itself is perfectly fine. The issue, the subtle issue that is going on here is that a Forex broker is not giving you that loan without any conditions attached to it. A Forex broker only gives you that loan because you are necessarily going to transact through them, i.e. you're going to give them a brokerage fee, i.e. you're going to give them a set return for every single loan that they give out. And so that is understood by classical Islamic scholars as something that is interest. It is a fixed return on the basis of a loan and that is not permissible. Ah, but Ibrahim, Forex is not as you characterized it. Actually, Forex is an instrument, so there's no loan going on and there's no true transactions in one. It's all just one package. But if that is the case, then Forex is a derivative because the kind of instrument it is, it doesn't have intrinsic value in itself. It derives its value from something underlying, i.e. the currencies, but you're not actually buying the currencies. And if that is the case, then Forex is unambiguously not permissible because derivatives are seen as haram by the vast majority of scholars. Some people argue that Forex is actually best understood as akin to a mainstream real life transaction. Okay, well let's run with that argument. What happens in real life to create the same effect as you buying a USD JPY currency pair? Well, what has happened is that you go to the broker you borrow Japanese yen, and then you use that Japanese yen to buy US dollars. And then you lend those US dollars that you have back to the broker. So what that has created the effect of is you are paying interest to the broker of yen, and you are getting paid interest uh, from the broker for the US dollars. And then 
that means that if the US dollar rate is more than the yen rate that you're having to pay, you're in a profit. And then when you close out the transaction, you take that US dollars, you get that back from the broker, and then you use that to buy the yen, and then you pay that back to the broker because you owed that to him in the first place, and you're all quits. There are two key issues with this. One is that interest is being charged. The other is the same issue that I mentioned previously, which is that the broker is only lending to you on the basis that you go through them and they get paid a commission. And that is not permissible by the majority of scholars, as I previously discussed. So even if you can get around the issue of the interest payment, which Islamic Forex accounts do, by the way, they do not get around this second issue, which is a much knottier and more problematic issue. Some brokers offer something called the Islamic account, and they say that if you invest through that, then that's going to be entirely Sharia compliant. Challenge each of these brokers to give you their Sharia certification, and then talk to the Sharia scholar that they refer to. Because if you do that, I bet the vast majority of them will have no Sharia certification, and if you ever do get through to a scholar, it will turn out that that scholar is not credible at all. So do do that. And the reason is because an Islamic account, all it does is it takes away the interest portion of a carry trade, you know, the USD JPY example that we just gave. It takes that away, but it leaves the other non-Sharia compliant issues exactly as they were. So to my knowledge, there is no truly Sharia compliant Forex account online that I have ever come across. As my time as a corporate lawyer, I got to work with and see closely how Forex brokers operate. And actually they were under a lot of pressure from the regulators because the regulators knew that 80% of the time, the average investor, the average punter who uses these brokers actually ends up losing money. And one of the key important things that people don't realize is when you're trading on Forex, uh, the average broker is actually the counterparty what that means is they're not just a broker, they're actually the other side of that transaction. And the reason why these brokers do that is because they know that 80% of the time, your ordinary investor is going to lose money. So why not take that money off them? So that's what these Forex brokers are doing. And that is hugely problematic. And of course, from a commercial perspective, leaving aside the Islamic aspects, it doesn't make sense, right? It just it will take you years to learn this skill properly and if you are not going to dedicate that time and you don't want to run the risk of losing that money, it just isn't worth it. The second important thing to remember is that if the Forex broker is not only your counterparty, i.e. the other side of that transaction, but also they are the ones who are handling the whole thing, i.e. if you have a referee that is also a member of the opposite team, you have a big problem. You have a conflict of interest because they might see a certain transaction that you put in and it might mean that they end up losing money. And it is very much in their interest to just, you know, subtly not see that transaction come in. And when they see it, it's a bit too late. And oh, oh, well, we didn't make a loss in that transaction. You know, and those things happen. There is regulation to deal with that, but those things can and do happen. And so for all of these reasons, commercially using retail Forex, in my view, is just a completely no-brainer, don't do it. So there you have it, folks. Forex is not only not permissible because it has a combination of one of the following, derivatives, two transactions in one, and interest, but it is also commercially not a good idea for you because 80% of the time, people who deal in Forex end up losing and just giving that money to the brokerage company. Finally, please do subscribe to this channel. Please do also comment below and share your thoughts about what we've been talking about in this video. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.